Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into your weekly dose of college football. That's right. I'm resurrecting this series. I love this series. Every single Wednesday, I'm going to be coming out with a new episode where it's just me basically reacting to random college football stuff I found off of Instagram. I constantly find stuff. I want to react to it. It's really tough for me to just make random videos about this stuff. So I figured, why not start fresh slate, new series. That's what I'm doing. Episode 1, your weekly dose of college football. And we're just going to be reacting to different recruiting things. Just random stuff. Interesting things I find off of Instagram. Uh, so the first thing, four-star running back cancels official visit to Tennessee when the check bounces, right? With the, when the Tennessee booster's like, no, you're not ranked high enough. The, 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 I thought that was funny. I don't know. The kid canceled his visit to Tennessee, and we know the rumors about Tennessee trying to, uh, you know, entice kids with NIL and giving a five-star quarterback an $8 million deal. It's pretty crazy. Worst college football coach hires from the last decade, I forgot about some of these. I mean, some of these are less miles to Kansas. Remember when people liked that? People liked that hire. Willie Taggart. Oh, Willie. Charlie Strong. <laughs> Jeremy Pruitt at number four. So the Jeremy Pruitt thing is really funny to me because, we, of course, we remember the rumor of Greg Schiano going to be the next coach at Tennessee. It was kind of underwhelming, and Tennessee fans threw a temper tantrum. They're like, we're not having this. We don't want Greg Schiano. We will revolt against it. And then they all acted happy when they got Jeremy Pruitt. It's like, no, Jeremy Pruitt is actually worse than Greg Schiano. Like, they got an even... Even when Jeremy Pruitt was hired... Everyone was like, wait, this there's no innovation with this dude. He's a defensive-minded coach under Nick Saban. How is this going to work? But Tennessee fans, because it wasn't Greg Schiano, they were like, oh, this guy's going to be good. Turns out he was a worse coach than Schiano. But I will say the Schiano hire would have been underwhelming for Tennessee. I don't think they'd be very good. Shiano's doing a good job at Rutgers right now, but I don't think he would really fit with Tennessee. It was just funny how Tennessee fans... I've never seen a fan base throw that big of a temper tantrum when it, there was like a rumor that Greg Schiano was going to be introduced as the next, the next head coach. They literally revolted and then they all acted like, oh, we got Jeremy Pruitt. Jeremy Pruitt was never a, a good candidate anyways. He was a defensive-minded, prehistoric coach who benefited off the talent that Nick Saban recruited. So I thought that was funny. Clay Helton. How many, like... I do. I will never understand the Clay Helton USC situation. Let me try and let me try and understand it. The only thing I can think is USC was waiting for the perfect coach to replace Clay Helton because Clay Helton should have been fired three years ago. I have no clue how he lasted as long as he did, and maybe it works out for USC because they get Lincoln Riley. I'm, you know, the only thing I can think. They've probably wanted to replace Clay Helton for a while, but uh, there was just not the right coach until Lincoln Riley comes along. Jimmy Lake, what a bust. Kevin Su Kevin Sumlin at Arizona, that pro he ran that program into the ground. Will Muschamp, that is funny. Uh, this is just something random I found on Twitter. Devin Gardner, the former Michigan quarterback, is apparently a college football analyst for uh, Fox Sports. So good for him. Wow. Says he also works at Bally... Ugh, I hate... Ba Guys, I hate Bally Sports uh, Network, whatever. That's a Nazi-run organization. I hate that network. Uh, if you guys... That's with the baseball games and things like that, the MLB games... Horrible scoreboard. Bally Sports has a horrible... But good... I was like... I was just looking randomly and I saw Devin Gardner's name and I was like, wow, he's actually a uh, an analyst. So good for him. He's probably making some pretty good money. And he was a Michigan captain. Okay, guys. So this is just something that I found. I'm going to be reacting to a lot of these... I think it's cool. The out-of-conference future schedule for each team. So Texas, we know they have the home-and-home -home with Alabama 2022 and 2023. So they'll be at Alabama in 2023. They get Rice at home. And then they also face Wyoming in a random game at home. 2024, it looks like they've got Michigan at home. Oh, yeah, this is a very unique... 
Texas has a very cool out-of-conference schedule over the next few years. 2024, they're at Michigan. Then they don't play Michigan again until 2027. In between 2024 and 2027, they have a home-and-home -home with Ohio State. So it's like a Michigan sandwich with Ohio State in the middle. It's so interesting. And then the other two games are just... Um, you know, nobody's. Looks like UTS, UTSA is not horrible. I mean, they had a good year last year. UTEP, San Jose State. Ohio State was supposed to face San Jose State, but it got canceled. That was going to happen next year. Uh, Texas State, UTSA again in 2026, and then UTEP in 2027. Texas's schedule in 2025 is going to, it's going to be so brutal because they moved to the SEC and you have an away game in Columbus, non-conference, they better expand the playoff. That's all I'll say. They better, ex that is a brutal non-conference schedule. College football impact 300. So these are the top ranked players in college football according to on three. Will Anderson, number one, can't argue it. Bryce Young, can't argue it. CJ Strout, Caleb Williams, JSN. That's funny. Four of the top five players are from either Ohio State or Alabama. And then we get two Clems, or excuse me, two Georgia players, Jalen Car Carter and Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers is one of the best tight end prospects I've seen in a while. And he's only a true sophomore. The kid was a true freshman last year. There's Jordan Addison, B. John Robinson, and a Northwestern offensive tackle. That Northwestern offensive tackle, don't be fooled. That was a top recruit, fringe five-star player that Northwestern got. That kid is really talented, and he's going to be a first-round pick. 11 through 20. So this is something that I think is egregious. I've got nothing against Gibbs. The transfer, Jamar Gibbs, the transfer running back from Georgia Tech who's going to Alabama. But how is Trevion Hen Henderson ranked lower than Gibbs? Uh, like, are you, Trevion Henderson as a true freshman runs for, you know, 1,500 rushing yards, over 10 rushing touchdowns. I don't understand that. Michael Mayer is really good. How about two players from Kansas State cracking? You know, I've heard a lot of, how about two players from Kansas State cracking the list? I've heard a lot of good things about Kansas State. They might be a surprise team in 2022. And then 21 through 30, Marvin Mims. I love Marvin Mims. Miles Murphy, we got to see something from him. We really do got to see something from him. There's Quinn Ewers. Quinn Ewers is just speculation. You know, you expect him to be a franchise quarterback. Xavier Worthy, we will see, but... The three, the three-headed monster at Texas: Quinn Ewers, Xavier Worthy, and Bijan Robinson, all in the top 30. There, this is another out-of-conference schedule. So this is Florida, 2023. So when it comes to you, you, notice they already have four games scheduled for the next four years. They're going to have to cancel one of those games because the SEC is going to a nine-game conference schedule, meaning they will only have three non-conference games. So I'm guessing Florida will be cancer canceling maybe that Florida A&M game in 2025. Is that S Sanford in 2020? Did Flo Wait, who was the team that Florida faced last year? The FCS team that nearly... Was it Sanford? They faced like an FCS team and they won like... 70 to 42 or something. I'm not kidding. Google it. Like Emory Jones threw six touchdown passes. Emory Jones is now transferred, but yeah, Emory Jones. So you can see 2023 at Utah. That'll be interesting if Cam Rising returns for a senior season. That could be a very tough game. And then they've got, you know, the rivalry game with Florida State at home, McNeese and Charlotte. Those are gimme games. How about UCF in 2024? The battle for Florida. Wow, the 2024 schedule is basically all of Florida. You've got Miami, UCF, both at home, at Florida State, and then Sanford. And then 2025, South Florida, Miami, Florida A&M, Florida State. 2026, a random road game against NC State. Campbell, how about Campbell, the FCS team? California, do they begin a home and home? Yeah, they have a home and home with California. 2026 and 2027. Why, that 2024 schedule for Florida, that should be really fun. Miami, UCF, and Florida State. 
This is Notre Dame's future uh, scheduling when it comes to their uh, key matchups because they are an independent. So how Notre Dame normally does their schedule, they'll always face a service academy, sometimes two service academies, and then they have this deal with the ACC where they face like three or four teams from the ACC, and then the rest of their games are random. So in 2023... You've got the rivalry game. That's a home game versus USC. You also have another home game versus Ohio State at Clemson and at NC State. Now, I will say with NC, NC State should be good in 2022, which is this coming year. But in 2023, they lose a lot. They've got a lot of seniors on that team. So it is a road game, but that should be manageable for Notre Dame. 2024, they start a home and home with Texas A&M. And they also have another home-and-home home with Miami. Catholics versus Convicts 2.0. They also have Arkansas in 2025 in a random road game. And then 2026, they've got Wisconsin and Michigan State with a road game at Florida State. So, very interesting schedule there. This is something I found very unique. Uh, Dante Moore just turned 17 last week. He's younger than some of the elite 2024 QB recruits should be taken into consideration when evaluating him crazy. Uh, so yeah, Dante Moore, if you guys aren't familiar, this is a five-star top 15 overall player QB in the class of 2023 who's currently being courted by a number of schools throwing NIL offers at him. And to me, this th this whole idea, this kid just turned 17 years old. And you've got 60-year-old boosters saying, you know, promising him six, seven-figure dollar money, you know, to come to their school. That is crazy. And that's one of the big problems with the way NIL has been weaponized. This how you just turned 17 years old. How can you possibly make a mature decision if you're getting seven figures figure offers thrown at you left and right? That kid is so freaking young. So young. Best running back in college football. I'll keep it simple, guys. It's Trevion Henderson and Bijan Robinson is a close second. That's the bottom line. Blake Corum, they included him. Deuce Vaughn. Kansas State. Guys, Kansas State is a sneaky team. You know, Kansas State might have to appear on my preseason initial top 25 poll, honestly. Heisman Trophy future. So there's been some interesting movement in terms of the overall Heisman odds recently. C.J. Strout is now the betting favorite to win the Heisman over Bryce Young. Many people probably surprised by that. How is that happening? Guys, it's so hard to win back-to-back -back Heismans. That's why C.J. Stroud is ahead of Bryce Young. Also, there's kind of a narrative, you know, we've seen Alabama. They've had three Heisman winners recently. It's almost like it's Ohio State's turn. Ryan Day's never had a Heisman winner. Haskins finished third. Um... Justin Fields, excuse me, finished third as well. C.J. Strout finished fourth. It's almost like, oh, you know, Alabama's had the last few Heismans. It's Ohio State's turn. When looking for value, the one guy I would say that's great value that's not even on this list, Will Anderson Jr. He had 31 tackles for loss last year as a true sophomore. The Heisman voters are dying to give the Heisman to a defensive player one of these years because there's this narrative that it's just a QB award now. If Will Anderson takes over a few games, he puts up like a 20 sack season. He's a great value right now. I don't know if he's plus 5,000 or what at this point. Uh, but you guys can just see some of the other players on there. Tyler Van Dyke, plus 3,000. I don't love it. DJ Uilangile, no chance. Caleb Williams, plus 1,200. You know, there's a narrative for him. But I think Caleb Williams, as a junior, is going to be the betting favorite to win the Heisman. Not this year. But C.J. Stroud moving ahead of Bryce Young. So hard to win two Heismans. You know, we know there's only one person that's ever won two Heismans. Archie Griffin. So that will be interesting. We've got another out-of-conference uh, schedule to react to. Wisconsin, you can see Wisconsin's 2023 out-of-conference schedule. Yikes. They get Buffalo at home, Georgia Southern at home, at Washington State. Oh my God. Every time I see Western Michigan's logo, 
I legitimately get triggered. Why did they change their logo? It's like it's like Western Michigan asked a third grader with you know Tourette's to decide to design their logo. I do not. It's just an ugly, just horrible W. They had such a sweet logo. It was like this Bronco, and they downgraded so much. Uh, but Wisconsin does have a home and home with Alabama in 2024 and 2025. They're in Tuscaloosa in 2025, and then they also face two cupcakes. 2026, they get Notre Dame. Is that what did Western Illinois change their logo too? Where it's literally just the words Western Illinois. I wonder if they and they get Pittsburgh. Oh, is that a neutral game? God, I hope that's not at Soldier Field. That was a horrible... They got to stop these neutral site games, guys. I hate neutral site games so much. Pittsburgh at home. And then they, they have a home and home with Pittsburgh. And that is that, that dog is... I think that's Southern Illinois. That's their logo, I think. In 2027, you guys see what I'm saying? That kind of lassie looking dog? Yeah. That's who they are. Alabama looking at them. So 2023, they still need to schedule another team. Notice how Alabama only has three out-of-conference opponents scheduled in 2024, 2025, and 2026. They know the SEC is going to a nine-conference or a nine uh, nine-game conference schedule, so they're only going to need to have three teams out of conference. 2023, I would imagine they they're going to schedule another cupcake. You know, to go along with Texas and South Florida. They wait, they have a home no way. They have a home and home with South So that Tex Alabama is on the road at South Florida in twenty twenty three at Raymond James State. Is that true? That is hilarious. Twenty twenty four Western Kentucky. They have their home and home with, with Wisconsin. They also have a home and home. Wow, twenty twenty five is gonna be brutal for them. Alabama in 2025 at Florida State versus Wisconsin, and then they also get UL Monroe. That's a brutal non-conference schedule. They have a home and home with uh, West Virginia starting in 2026, and in 2027 they have a home and home with Ohio State. That 2027 game will be in Columbus. We've got some bold predictions to react to here. Uh, Jackson State misses the SWAC championship and Hunter transfers. So tr there was some interesting talk about Travis Hunter only going to Jackson State for a year and then transferring just to get an NIL deal. I don't know how true that is, but I mean, it's a bold prediction. We'll see if he ends up transferring. It'll be weird because this is the number one overall prospect, but he's not playing in a good conference. So how do you judge how good he actually is? Is it good for his overall development to be playing in that conference. I mean, I guess it's a unique situation. We've never seen something like it. We've never seen something like that. Uh, but Deion Sanders is a great coach, you know, so I'm sure he's going to get good coaching. Notre Dame beats Ohio State week one by 10 plus. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. That Now, that is funny. Uh, three Ohio State players in top six of Heisman voting. I actually think this already happened in 2019 with Justin Fields, Chase Young, and J.K. Dobbins. So this would not surprise me at all if Shrout, Henderson, and JSN all finished in the top six. Cade Kubnick will take over for DJ by week four and will lead Clemson to the college football playoff final. Very similar to Trevor Lawrence and Kelly Bryant. Very similar situation. They're going to give DJ a chance to see if he's improved. But this Cade Kubnick, this is the number one overall quarterback. He is a true freshman. It's tough to ask a true freshman to come in, you know, and be like a Trevor Lawrence type player. But... The, the leash is pretty short on DJ. He's got to show he's improved a lot. Uh, Hudson Card starts over Quinn Ewers. 0% chance this happens. It is a artificial QB battle. It is not a quarterback battle. The only reason Steve Sarkeesian is saying it's a quarterback battle is to push Quinn Ewers to be better. Quinn Ewers, no matter what, will be the starter week one. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. The only way Quinn Ewers is not starting week one is if he's injured. Guaranteed. It's a fake quarterback battle. Stenson pops off and wins the <laughs> and wins the Heisman. Oh, that's amazing. 
amazing. Uh, this is something that it's just, I did a video on this. So you've got NFTs entering the world of college football and this, what Georgia University is doing, you can see this is a piece of digital art. It's a green, uh, you know, bulldog with a player's signature in the top left corner. And I guess a Georgia fan has purchased it. It's sold out. So maybe there were multiple, I don't know. For $199, NFTs plus NIL. I did a video on this. It's all so ridiculous, but it is what it is. So this is amazing. This is a five-star receiver, Carnell Tate, quite possibly the number one receiver in the class of 2023. He says, you can go to the league and be a first-round pick anywhere. This dude is straight up trolling Ohio State. So... He puts out a tweet like this, and you would think this is a pro-Tennessee tweet because if you guys don't know, there's a whole narrative going around with this recruitment. It's kind of like NIL versus development. Like Ohio, it, it's a, it's a two-team battle right now, Ohio State and Tennessee, and Ohio State is selling Carnell Tate on development. Look at Chris Olave. Look at Garrett Wilson. Look at JSN. Come be a first-round pick. We will develop you while Tennessee's just offering him like $3 million, right? And this kid, by saying you can go anywhere, that would be a positive to Tennessee. But I think he's just trolling. I think everyone knows he's going to Ohio State and he's doing a little trolling of the Ohio State fan bases. If he's seriously doing that, I give him credit. I really do. But if he means this tweet legitimately... Uh, it Technically, it is true. You could go to Tennessee and be a first-round pick, but the analogy I would use, like if I needed open-heart surgery and I have had the choice of two surgeons, and one of the surgeons was from Yale and the other surgeon was from West Virginia, I would choose the surgeon from Yale. It's like, yeah, maybe the surgeon from West Virginia can give me good open-heart surgery, but more than likely, I'm going to get better care from Yale. It's like, yeah, you can go to Tennessee and be a first-round pick as a receiver, but chances are you're going to be developed better by Ohio State. That's, you know, I mean, he's technically true. I think he's just trolling with this tweet, trying to drum up like, ooh, I'm going to Tennessee, and then he ends up coming to Ohio State. Last I heard, he was supposed to be committing uh, in June, so we'll see if that holds true, and it'll be very fascinating. Tennessee versus Ohio State, development versus NIL. Very interesting battle. The kid can choose wherever he wants to go, but it's just a, un a unique scenario now with how N NIL works in college football. Power 5 schools ranked by fewest losing seasons in the last 50 years. So I was struck by how remarkable some of these programs are. I would say tier one is Ohio State and Oklahoma. Just two losing seasons in the last 50 years for Ohio State. Just three for Oklahoma. A few things that surprised me. USC only has five losing seasons in the last 50 years. It feels like they've been down. Clemson has eight. Nebraska only has eight, you know? And a lot of those have come recently. Very interesting there. And then when it comes to, like, programs who are decent but were horrible you look at a program like Iowa State who has been better under you know Matt Campbell but 32 losing seasons in the last 50 years Vanderbilt 44 losing seasons in the last 50 years LSU kind of surprised me I thought they were more consistent than that they have 12 LSU is a really they're an extreme university it's like they're either unbelievable or they're just not very good you know, it's like the opposite of Ohio State. Like, Ohio State is always consistently very good, but they, ne they you know, they're always at the end, but they can never win the national title. Where LSU is, they're always either really good or just eh, not very good. You know, it's, it's one or the other with them. And with Brian Kelly, Brian Kelly was a terrible hire by LSU. My God. Like, oil and water. Horrible hire. Uh, highest paid NFL defensive players in the NFL. So, this is an interesting graph because... You take a look at two of the top six defensive players, highest paid defensive players went to Mac schools. I had no clue that Max Crosby went to Eastern Michigan. I'm digging that Eastern Michigan logo. It's clean. It's, it's a classic. Uh, but you guys can just see the overall schools there. I just thought it was unique that the Mac had two of the top six, Khalil Mac and then Max Crosby as well. This is really cool. I, I thought I would just shout it out. 
a recruit from Maryland did a Pokemon themed top schools list and it's heat. Yeah, it's, it's really unique. I thought that was a cool thing to see right there just randomly. And then one more quick thing on 247 Sports Instagram. Every one of their posts is a video. I'm, this is just my little rant. What is the point of using Instagram if you're just going to post video clips the whole time? I don't get it. 247 Sports could have a really cool Recruit recruiting page where they show different graphics of five stars in the past and things like that But instead it's just a bunch of videos. It's Instagram. I don't want to see videos on Instagram a video every now and then Okay, I can live with it. Whatever every one of their posts is a video clip. It's it's a joke It's a complete joke and then we've got this little thing here Arch Manning is he going to Georgia? I wonder how tall Arch Manning is. He looks he looks taller than Jalen Hale. I thought Jalen Hale was a tall receiver. But yeah, Arch Manning, I would say, guys, at this point, it's either Texas or Georgia, and I would give the ed edge to Texas. He just completed his official visit to Georgia last week. It went well, but of course it's going to go well. They rolled out the red carpet for him. He's going to Alabama this week. Very little chance he actually goes to Bama because they already have a quarterback committed in their 2023 class. And then his last official visit is to Texas. And that's the current favorite. There's been some talk about him possibly going to LSU and things like that. But I think it comes down to Georgia and Texas with Texas as the leader right now for Arch Manning. And then we had this as well. Former TCU coach Gary Patterson released a new country song. Isn't that great? That's amazing. And we'll end off on this. Top 25 quarterback CJ Carr is committing tomorrow night from the state of Michigan. This is Lloyd Carr's grandson and he is going to commit to Notre Dame which is really surprising, and Michigan fans are just going crazy about it. Uh, pretty shocking there, but C.J. Carr will be committing the five-star quarterback for the class of 2024, so he's a little bit younger. C.J. Carr, big get for Marcus Freeman. He's done such an amazing job recruiting for Notre Dame in his first offseason. You know, what a he's really seems to be relating to players well. Notre Dame's got a great class in 2023, and if they get C.J. Carr, which everyone expects them to, that is an amazing start beating out Michigan for a kid from Michigan who's Lloyd Carr's grandson. Crazy, crazy. But guys, that is going to do it for your weekly dose of college football. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.